achieved. All right, what's up, everybody? And welcome. Oh, got my camera a little off there. Sorry, just got off the radio where we do the Zoom conferences. Welcome to Studio Day Heffery, where, of course, guess what's back in the news, baby? Jamal Adams to the Cowboys. Why? Because Jamal Adams is trying to get to the Cowboys. Um, he's very intentionally <laughs> pushing the buttons on the New York Jets because they're not giving him the contract that he wants to try to push his way out of town. He's been doing it for a while, and I, for one, really enjoy watching it happen. Uh, Jamal Adams, unhappy with the Jets, once out, but we have reached a new point here where he has officially requested a trade, according to Rich here, who writes about the Jets. He has officially requested a trade from the New York Jets. He'd like to be allowed to go shopping and see if he can find a place with his agent to try to get him hooked up where Jamal Adams will be happy and can get his little contract. Now, we know that Jamal Adams is not happy. We've known that Jamal Adams is not happy with the Jets, and we also know that they've been fiddle-farting around. He feels like they've not been honest with him and that they haven't really made an effort to get him a deal. Like, oh, we love you. We're going to give you so much money. Well, where's the offer, right? So where is Jamal Adams going to end up? Well, it's interesting that you should ask because Jamal Adams also has a list of where he'd like to end up. And as you can see, all these teams are good at football. So Jamal Adams is trying to go to a winner. And the Dallas Cowboys are on that list. I believe he's in DFW right now with a cigar in his mouth golfing. I believe I just saw that. So Jamal, I'll tell you this, brought us today. My buddy Brian brought us at Brian brought, uh, at Brian brought us with a Y on Twitter said, you know, I really can't see him sending him to an AFC team. And if that's the case, then we could actually go ahead and narrow down that list, right? Scratch the Ravens, scratch the Texans, scratch the Chiefs, and let's narrow this thing down to Cowboys, Eagles, 49ers, Seahawks. We can narrow it down that far, but we also have to factor in uh, the idea that whatever we factor it down to, there's a decent possibility that we should factor it down to it doesn't matter because the Jets aren't going to trade him. That's totally a possibility. I think Jamal Adams will be traded. It's just a matter of when. Maybe it won't be before the season. Maybe it'll be when the Jets get off to a bad start, which I think they will, and when other teams get off to a good start. And then at the trade deadline, you start bidding on them. But as far as what the Cowboys think, we know there's been interest before from the Dallas Cowboys. So what I want to do is is go to the homie Jane Slater, who has been reporting on this today, and let's see what Slater has to say about where the Cowboys are with this. She says, doing her due diligence, uh, Cowboys are fans of Jamal, but a team source tells me nothing from us yet when I asked if there was any interest on their front. And she then mentions yet, like Earl Thomas, Cowboys fans implies what it would cost them and what they have to give up. They tried before and it was way too high. Same with Earl. So what has changed? Has the Jets asking price changed? Maybe not. They probably think they still have a really good commodity. So what's really changed is that Jamal's mad at him. And Jamal is going to try to make it tough on him because here's the problem for NFL players right now. They have no leverage. You can't hold out or the year doesn't count. So it just stops you from getting to free agency. And so Jamal Adams is in a tough spot where all he can really do is make as much noise as possible to try to make it uncomfortable for the team to try to get them to okay him, get moved to where he wants to go. And I do think that where he wants to go is the Dallas Cowboys for sure. It's where he wants to be. I think if you made me bet, I would say the odds are at some point, Jamal Adams is a Dallas Cowboy. The problem right now is you can make anything work. This is the thing about the salary cap. I fight with people about it all the time. Yes, you can make any one player work. It's just a matter of how much you're willing to risk. For instance... Let's say you want to add Jamal Adams to the Cowboys, okay? We've done it. We traded a one and a three, a four, whatever. 
and you added Jamal Adams to the Cowboys. Now it's time to give Jamal Adams his new contract. Although I didn't include this tweet, but Calvin Watkins is saying there are some teams that if Jamal went to and was sort of insinuating this would be the Cowboys, if he goes there, he doesn't necessarily need his extension right away. He'll just play football and then work out the extension when you work it out. But let's say you want to fit Jamal Adams into the Dallas Cowboys salary cap. People are going to hate me for this because I'm one of the few people that acknowledges the salary cap exists and it's a real thing. 2021 Cowboys cap right now. They have $36 million in cap space in 2021. So not this season, but next. Dak Prescott also counts as a zero right now. So if his deal gets done, he'll count for... 30 million, 35 million, whatever, right? So that's all of it. That's all of their cap space right now. And that's assuming, or if he's tagged again a year from now, 39 million. So that's all of their cap space and then some. Uh, That's where you are in 2021. So what do teams do when they need to generate some cap space? Well, you can cut guys, you can restructure guys, you can push money back. So... Look at the names on the very top for the Cowboys in terms of the cap number that they take up. Tank is on top there, $22 million. Dead money would be $32 million if you get rid of him, so you would literally be getting rid of a player and eating $32 million, more than he makes. So you could restructure that, and you could move Tank's money around, bring his cap number down this year, and bring it up in a later year. You're just moving guaranteed money to a later year. You could do the same thing with Ezekiel Elliott, who's uncuttable. His cap number's 13.7, but the dead money is 24 and a half. So he's uncuttable. Zach Martin, if you cut him, you could save $7 million. You'd be eating $8 million against the cap, but you could save seven. The name that jumps out with a big number that you could save is Tyron Smith at $10.5 million. And I bring all this up because with the COVID, all these websites – are calling the 2021 cap $210 million, give or take, which is 12 higher than this year. And the reports are maybe it stays the same in 2021, or maybe it goes down because of the loss of revenue. So maybe the Cowboys are actually 10 or 20 or 30 million over just with Dax deal. And now you're talking about adding a guy in Jamal Adams who, according to Rich Samini, said he wants to be the highest paid player on the Jets, which is C.J. Mosley right now making $17 million a year. So now I got to fit $18 million in per year there? It's just hard. And so you can do it. The question is, do you want to do that when the cost is, what's a realistic cost for Jamal Adams? It's more than a first-round pick, right? So it's a first-round pick. Uh, we'll say a third round pick because you'll have a third round comp pick. So you can do that if you want to. And now you have Jamal Adams. Now you got to make him fit with his long-term deal and with keeping your quarterback around. So what you do is you restructure Demarcus Lawrence, Zach Martin, and Ezekiel Elliott. And you clear out the, now this is assuming the cap does not go down and then you'd have enough. Move a bunch of money for all three of those. Bring the 22 for Tank down to 15. Bring the, I don't know what their built-in switches are, but they have them. And let's say we can get his money from those three. So now what you're looking at is you're banking that Tank Lawrence for the next three years is still an incredibly productive player because his cap number is going to be high and he's going to be uncuttable. You're banking that Ezekiel Elliott is a stud and stays that way for three years because he becomes uncuttable. Zach Martin you're banking that he stays a really, really right guard for two or three years because he becomes uncuttable. That's how people pretend that the salary cap's not real because for any one player, you can do things like that. You can move money, and it's no big deal. But there is an end of the road for that. The Vikings are seeing that this year. The Eagles will see that next year when they're already $50 million over the cap, and that's assuming that it goes up again, they may be 60 or $70 million over the cap. And that's without signing free agents. That's without signing their draft class. That's, you know, so they're in a bad spot. They're going to have to do a whole bunch of more restructuring or cutting, eating dead money, all that. So those are the risks, but Jamal Adams wants out. The jets so far have said, no, you cannot seek a trade. The Cowboys are absolutely one of the teams interested. It's just a matter of, can we make this work? What would I do? 
the first round pick part is a gimme. I'm a responsible team builder, so I hate having to play these games with the salary cap and hope to God that all of your highly paid players will not fall off due to injury or become guys who don't take the field because they're injured or you got to cut a guy and eat $20 million. I hate doing that. But I could go I could go partially the Philadelphia Eagle route here and flip some switches for Jamal Adams. It's tough, man. Why couldn't you just give Byron Jones $17 million? Now you're trying to get me to give up a one, a three, restructure people's deals for Jamal Adams. I'd sign him in free agency and pay him market setting safety money. I got no problem with that. But the one and three and restructures and contract. I give you a one and a four. And I'll be mad about it. I have my first round pick, fourth round pick for a strong safety. He's more than a strong safety, though. He's going to force you a couple of fumbles every year. He's going to get you four sacks a year. He's going to get you eight tackles for loss a year. He's going to bat down nine passes. Dude makes plays. He's an impact player for sure. One and a four. I'll give you a one and a four. I'll pay him. We'll restructure a bunch of dudes. And we'll hope that those bodies hold up for the next two or three years and it doesn't hurt us. Because I'm chasing the Super Bowl. I'm chasing the Super Bowl. The other thing you can do, I threw this out on Twitter, and boy, people hated me for it. By the way, make sure that you're hitting the thumbs up on the videos on youtube.com slash Jeff Cavanaugh and leave comments on, uh, I don't know, your favorite condiment, what you like to build out of snow, what you want to talk about tomorrow for the next video. What you think about this Jamal Adams thing? What would you give up? Is it worth it? Are you anti this trade? The only thing I'm anti is don't talk about trading my wide receivers. We're not doing that. Stop it. Um, one and a four is a lot. Why don't you just draft a safety next year in the first round? I'd do it. Yeah, most broadcasters are like, this is the right thing to do. I let you see the angst and indecision. They're real. Those things are real. Uh, I forgot what I was even talking about. Oh, yeah, leave in the comments what you want to talk about tomorrow and what you think about the Jamal Adams possibility in Dallas. And the other thing, make sure you're subscribed and you got the notifications turned on. What about Josh Gordon? Maybe I'll go in depth on this tomorrow. Josh Gordon applied for reinstatement today. I think a lot of people probably think he would go back to Seattle if he gets reinstated. Bring him to Dallas. Bring me Josh Gordon. He'd probably, go, he'd probably want to, if he gets reinstated, go somewhere where he has better opportunity to maybe be a starter because he's still a good player or at least a capable player. But with the way the Cowboys' depth chart looks after the top three, boy, if he's interested, bring me Josh Gordon. Treat him like Randy Gregory. Treat him like Sean Lee. I'm building my team as if you don't exist, but if you do, sweet. Sign you to a contract that pays you by each game that you're active for, a uh, max of a few million dollars, and... Every week that he's available is a sweet bonus. I now have a fourth receiver that is a proven NFL commodity. What about Josh Gordon? Leave it in the comments. Let me know. And uh, leave there what you want to talk about tomorrow so I've got something, something hot and spicy to give to you tomorrow morning. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thanks for listening to G-Bag Nation and checking 1053thefan.com. I will see you guys tomorrow.